Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I do your watching and sometimes talking and working with the commissioner uh, at the legislature and a few other things for you. So the commissioner told you basically everything I was going to tell you that was in the budget, but what she didn't tell you is the process and how. <laughs> Here for a while, we weren't sure we were going to have a budget. It was a very interesting session. You have the House coming up with a budget, the Senate changed it, uh, and then they had a committee of conference. They agreed on a budget, and I think everybody knew the governor was going to veto it. And the reason is business taxes. There were other things in there that were a problem, but really what he kept hanging his hat on were, were business taxes. So eventually it all worked out, and as the commissioner reported, um, we've tacked B, BPT and BET to flat, depending on the revenues, they'll either go up or down or stay where they are. So we'll, we'll see what happens. They ended, up ending up, they ended up with a good compromise. I will say, though, they missed the first deadline. They were supposed to have a budget, I can't remember the date, something like September 21st, and they didn't have one. And the budget, the, the continue, continuing resolution budget was expiring at the end of September. And it really was at the 13th hour that they came up with a resolution. And this was, as I recall, on Thursday, Tuesday afternoon when they were supposed to be voting on Wednesday. And at that point, a lot of what we call the people in the background, like me, are scrambling because you knew the Democrats were going to support the budget. You knew the governor was going to support it, but you really didn't know that the rest of the Republican Party was. And you had this entire group over here, um, libertarians, that you really weren't sure, and you needed a two-thirds vote to get the budget onto the table to be even be voted on. That was the issue. The vote of the budget itself was only 50%. Uh, or majority, 50% plus one. But the actual vote to get the budget on the table to be voted on was two thirds. And the Democrats didn't have two thirds, and the Republicans would, it could be two thirds with the Republican help, but you really weren't sure where your folks were going. And there was a lot of scrambling that Tuesday night, and a lot of people making telephone calls from all sorts of constituencies saying, just pass the budget because we really weren't quite so sure what was going to happen if it didn't pass. It passed, all's great. Number of huge changes, as the commissioner said, on the tax scene, a couple of them that did not have um, what we call the um, normal public hearings. They were a single sales factor and conformity were put in in the Senate. Uh, oh, no, was it the compromise? It was a compromise. It was a compromise, I'm sorry, it was put in in the committee of conference without having had a public hearing. And they kind of fudged it a little bit as to how they claimed they talked about it, but it was not with a, with a public hearing. The market sales part of the budget, they actually had had a bill, Senate Bill 190, which had been sitting on the table, and eventually, because there was no budget, they finally said, heck with it, we're going to pass this, the governor signed it, and so you knew market sales was going to go through, market-based sales portion was going to go through no matter what, the, what happened with the budget. But conformity and the single sales factor, you weren't sure. So they're there, it'll be very interesting to see what the commission does. Carl Heathfield has been on that commission for my gosh. Maybe three years, four years. I mean, I have to tell you, when I started lobbying, which I never thought I'd be doing because I didn't know how to do it, but back in 1995, uh, I was working with a client in the southern part of the state, and um, a tax lawyer and I and a number of people were talking about single sales factor back in 1995. So here we are, ever how many years later, nearly 30. And so it'd be really interesting to see how that that committee that commission works with it because you really haven't seen the constituencies really talk about it. And you've got out of state, you've got in state, you've got small, you've got big. So now that it's owned the books as law, it'll be it'll be interesting to watch. So we have a budget. 
We now have a new session starting in January. The House has put in all their titles for bills. The Senate is putting in titles for their bills. Their filing period closes next Wednesday on the 30th. So we'll see what comes. We have titles. We haven't seen any actual text as to what's going on. There are a number of um, tax-related bills coming up. There are a number of tax-related bills that are still, as I call it, alive. They've been re-referred or retained. So who knows? We'll, 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 see, we'll see what happens. But to just give you a little bit of a flavor of what might be coming up. And before I do that, let me just say there were, I don't know, five or six bills on the Wayfair case, the whole issue of, of cross-border taxation. There was a bill that passed that supposedly solved it. I don't know, Commissioner, whether it really solved it, but there was a bill that passed. There are four or five other bills that have been still floating around. I don't think you'll see those move forward. I think what passed this year is what we'll see how, see how that works. A uh, couple of other things that are still hanging out there but I don't think will go anywhere was the uh, increasing the interest in tax, uh, interest in dividends tax exemption and decreasing the R&D, the research and development tax credit. I don't think you're going to see that go anywhere. Rooms and meals tax for short-term rental, Airbnb, that's still hanging out there, and there are bills coming up in 2020. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, there were some proposals to, to fund education through a 5% capital gains tax, like the interest in dividends tax. We but don't have an income tax, but if you have a dividend, you have an income tax. Um, and then there was another one that I actually was surprised in the past, which was in increasing the minimum gross business income required to follow the BPT. Didn't pass, I don't think we'll see that, see that again. What's dead right now? A sales tax and an income tax. Mm -hmm. However, we do have next year coming up again an income tax. I don't know, the, and, and the income tax so far that's been titled for next year is tying the income tax to a direct decrease in the property tax. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Other things that have been filed for next year, but I have no idea what the language is that may be interesting to you all, and I don't know about this, is the electronic filing of the rooms and meals tax and interest of any, sure, yeah, I, mean, I thought that's what you guys were doing. So that's actually a bill that's been requested by the department. Oh, okay. Um, nice and it's just clarifying how uh, meals and rooms or meals and rentals can be filed. Currently, we have a uh, telefile system where licensees can file over the telephone. With this wonderful new system that you saw this morning, we're going to have everybody switch to utilizing that. And so we'll no longer be offering the telefile system. So we had to do a few changes. Um, in, in statute in order to effectuate that. And then another part of that bill also deals with um, how the department under statute is required to assess interest. So we have to update interest on a daily basis. Um, and that bill um, would help us to potentially achieve, similar to how your credit card works, that with, when you receive your bill, you have 30 days to pay it. And so if it sits on your kitchen table for two weeks and you pick it up, when you pay it, that's the right amount to pay. Um, so it would allow us to cycle our interest on a monthly basis, which would just be a lot more helpful. Um, because right now, like I said, interest accrues on a daily basis. So when we mail you a tax notice, we project 10 days worth of interest. But if you pay it on the ninth day or if you pay it on the 11th day, the amount that's on your bill is wrong. So we're seeking to hopefully clarify that and make it easier for everyone. I think we can probably support that. Uh, another one that I think is interesting is, is the um, combined reporting for unitary business under the BPT. No idea what that means. If you know. uh, there's clearly one for an income tax. There's clearly a bill that increases or decreases the state rates and revenues. I don't know what that means, but clearly to me, to me it sounds like it's talking about the BPT and the BPT. So, the reason we don't know what these mean is because we've only seen a title. We haven't actually seen the language. Uh, another one um, 
relative to deductions from the BPT for investments in community zones, federally designated uh, community zones in, in municipality. There's back again the Airbnb tax, and then there's back again something to do with the interest and dividends tax, and I would bet again it's going to be increasing the exemption level of some sort. That has been happening year after year, and I will honestly say I've been very surprised there hasn't been some changes there, and I'm just not really, I'm not really understanding why. I do understand when they, when they combine it with reducing the interest in dividends, I mean the, um, the research and development credit, that's a problem, but it's, it's interesting. The Senate filing period, as I said, closes uh, next Wednesday. I've seen, as of when I walked in here, about 25 bills from the Senate. And so only the one that has to do with the interest and dividends tax is a Senate bill so far. So I expect we'll see. We'll see a lot more. So stay tuned for December and, Jan and January. The other thing to quickly say to you is an election year. And we have an interesting situation going on right now, so I have no idea what's going to happen in 2020. The governor has announced he will run for re-election. I think somebody's running against him, but somebody who has a funny name, like no name or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> truly, the person changed oh, yeah, their nobody. name to something. Nobody. Nobody, you're right, nobody. Uh, and then uh, the Democratic side, at the moment we have Dan Feltis, who is the Senate Majority Leader from Concord running, and Andy Belinsky, who, if you remember, did all the litigation and is and, uh, school funding and has been around for a good 20 to 30 years fighting the, uh, the school funding issue. He's an executive counselor, also from Concord. He's running. I have no prediction to make on that. However, it makes a very interesting situation because Senator Feltis obviously is part of the majority in the Senate and may be acting on legislation that is coming forward from the governor's office of the Democrats. Councilor Polinsky is one of five councilors. Every contract over $5,000 has to be approved by them. And there are three Democrats and two Republicans, so you could see some stuff going on with with state contracts, thank goodness you your contracts yes. are done, <laughs> you are fine. Uh, so you're going to start to see politics in places we haven't seen it traditionally, and it'll be it'll be a very interesting time. There may be others who come in, but I think you've got it's an in, it's an interesting situation. So we, that may mean lots of good things pass, and it may be lots of good things don't pass, or who knows. But the, the most important thing I can say to you is be engaged. There are members of the society, even though it's January, February, March, April, uh, that do come up and testify. We'd love to have you at some point if you have time, particularly in the Concord area, to come testify or come. And when I say testify, normally it's really expert testimony. The department's great about being really very objective and just saying what the situation is. The society has been really good over the years of just coming in from the practitioner point of view and explaining what whatever these changes are going to be, what impact that might have on the practitioner community or on your client. So we'd love to love to see you up here and it is kind of fun. Joel comes every now and then, Robin comes, Carl comes, a lot of good people come.